Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be installing InfluxDB and Grafana into Home Assistant. InfluxDB is a database that has been optimized for long-term time keyed reporting. Hence, it doesn't replace the Home Assistant database, which is optimized for operational use. Neither does it replace MariaDB, which can replace the Home Assistant database if you followed the video in the pop-up above. At the default configuration, the Home Assistant database is set to retention period of 10 days. We can run InfluxDB in parallel and tune it to specific entities if required, then set the retention period with a limitation based only on the available space. A good example of where we would use this would be in analyzing weather data that we might collect from our weather station. Check out my review and integration of the EcoWit WitBoy weather station in the pop-up above. If we store the information within Home Assistant, it will be purged after 10 days, although in this case, EcoWit keeps the information in their servers and available from within the app, but not within Home Assistant unless you implement a database such as the InfluxDB. So now we understand why we need InfluxDB. What is Grafana? Well, Grafana is a visual representation tool. It allows for simple representation of data in many different styles and formats. It can draw from many sources, but we'll be focusing on the InfluxDB. But you should note that Grafana cannot read the MariaDB or the Home Assistant database. The deployment of Grafana into Home Assistant leverages some open source libraries, and hence Grafana exists as a commercial package outside of Home Assistant, and as such is constantly being developed. To sum up, think of InfluxDB as the backend storage and Grafana as the graphical frontend representation. So now we understand the why and the what, let's jump into the how and install InfluxDB and Grafana. To install InfluxDB, you will need a HAOS or supervised installation. To check what type of installation you have, navigate to Settings, About, if you see core or supervised, then you can continue with the installation. Navigate to settings, add-ons, press the blue button in the bottom right-hand corner for add-on store. Search for and select InfluxDB. Now press the install button. Once installed, remember to turn on Watchdog. This will restart the add-on if the add-on crashes for whatever reason. Also turn on show in sidebar. This will allow for easy access. It's not recommended to turn on auto update so you can view the update notes prior to upgrading and make a decision if you should upgrade or not. Now press start. Now there is no configuration required so we can run in the default configuration. Although for more advanced features, you may need to set accordingly. Check that you get the green dot in the top right hand corner to signify that it has started successfully. Select the log in the top menu, scroll down and make sure you see starting NGINX, which means the InfluxDB has successfully started. Now navigate to InfluxDB in the left hand menu to see the graphical interface. The first thing we'll need to do is to create a database and a user that can read and write to that database. In the left menu, press the crown icon, which is the Influx admin. Now in the top right hand corner, press create database. Enter a database name such as home assistant. Then press the green dot to the right. You'll now need to set a duration that the data will be kept for. Now you can either set up a retention policy or simply set up a duration that the data will be kept for. Hover over the retention policy and press edit. By default, the retention policy is set to infinity. You can either leave this or you can enter in a value. I'll set mine for 31 days. Now press save. A word of caution here. Be conscious about the size of the database that you are asking InfluxDB to create. This is especially important if you are running on an SOC, such as a Raspberry Pi. Now we have our database, let's create a user that will have read-write access to this database. Navigate to the Users tab on the top menu. Press Create User. I'll use Smart Home Australia and give it a password. Remember that you can use the I symbol to the right to view your password. Now press Create. Now let's give our user permissions to read and write to the Home Assistant database. Simply press the read and write permissions against the database names and press apply in the top right hand corner. Now we need to update our configuration.yaml file to tell Home Assistant to start sending information to the InfluxDB. Now if you don't have an editor, I'd recommend using Studio Code Server, but any editor will be fine. I'll put a link in the pop-up above so that you can go and install. Once installed, press Studio Code Server in the left-hand menu. Now select configuration.yaml from the list on the left-hand side. Now copy and paste the code from the description below into your configuration.yaml. 
replace the IP address with the Home Assistant IP address for your system. Also change the username and password for the ones that you just created. Once you've updated, we'll now need to restart Home Assistant. Head to the Developers Tools, check your configuration, and press Restart. Confirm with Restart Home Assistant, and press Restart again. Once restarted, navigate back into InfluxDB. Now navigate to Explorer, which is the graph icon. You should see a window for Query 1 and your Home Assistant database. Now select your Home Assistant database. To the right of the Home Assistant database, you should see various different measurements. Selecting any of these measurements and drilling down, you should be able to see the entities that are available for that domain. This signifies that Home Assistant is now populating the Influx database with the values from your entities. Now let's go and install Grafana. Navigate to Settings, Add-ons. Press the blue Add-on Store in the bottom right-hand corner. Search for and select Grafana. Now press the Install button. Now turn on the Watchdog to restart the add-on if it crashes. Also turn on the Show In sidebar for easy access. Now although you can configure Grafana, for our purposes none is required. Press Start. Make sure you get the green dot in the top right hand corner. Now navigate to Grafana in the left hand menu. Here is where you can create graphs, charts, dashboards based on the data that InfluxDB has collected. But before we do this, we need to connect Influx to Grafana. Press the hamburger in the top left hand corner of Grafana screen. Expand out the section for connections. Search for and select InfluxDB. Press the Add New Data Source button in the top right hand corner. In the HTTP section, enter the URL address of your Home Assistant. Prefix with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash IP address colon 8086. Although localhost is shown as the default, it is not good practice to use this and instead to use the absolute IP address. Scroll down to the Influx Details section and enter your database name and your username and password. Now press Save and Test. If everything was successful, you should see a green tick and that the data source is working and a number of measurements found. Now we get to the fun stuff of using Grafana to create dashboards based on information that has been stored in InfluxDB. Now as I've only just installed InfluxDB, there will not be a significant amount of data stored, but there will be enough to demonstrate the concepts. We'll be creating a new dashboard that is based on the data from my Whipboy weather station. We'll have panels for outside temperature and rainfall, which will be line charts, and a separate panel for a UV index, which will represent as a gauge from one, which is low exposure, to 11 plus, which is extreme exposure. We'll start by creating a new dashboard. Press the plus icon in the top right hand corner. Select new dashboard. Select add visualization. Select the InfluxDB, which is the default database, will be dropped into a panel. This consists of three different sections. The top section is the preview of the data. The bottom section is the query of selecting the data. The right-hand side of the panel is about customizing the view of the data. When creating graphs, we perform the same basic steps and then refine. First, we need to select our data. For those of you that are familiar with SQL, this will look very familiar, but simplified with prompts. Press the Select Measurement. Now, as we're reporting on an outside temperature, it's measured in degrees Celsius in Australia. So scroll down and select that. Grafana will display all data points that are measured in degrees Celsius. Now we need to refine the data to the outside temperature from our weather station. Press the plus to the right of the where. Select the entity ID. Press the Select Tag value. As I know my Whipboy entities start with Whipboy, I'll type this in to make it easier to search for it. I'll scroll down to the Whipboy Outdoor Temperature Entity ID and select. Grafana will now display the data points specifically for the Whipboy Outdoor Temperature. Two final things we need to do in the query section before moving on to the visualization of our data. Change the alias name as it will be reflected in the legend. And optionally change the name of the query, as this will make it easier for reference if we want to put multiple data points on the same graph, such as displaying the inside temperature on the same graph. Now we can move on to the visualization, which is on the right side of the panel. Firstly, let's change the name of the graph to outside temperature. Grafana allows you to see the values of specific data points, but you need to hover directly over the data point. Change the tooltip mode to all. This will display the value of the data point that aligns with the cursor position. 
As this is a time-based graph, there is no need to label the x-axis. However, we do need to enter degrees into the label field for the y-axis. Now, I would like to see the data points joined. For this, select Connect Null Values. Also, to highlight the data, I can now adjust the fill opacity. And finally, to emphasize the line, I'll increase the line width. And our graph is done. Moving up to Apply, and we're finished. Now, let's move on to the Rainfall Graph. Press the Add dropdown. Select Visualizations. We now repeat the steps of selecting our data and then moving to the visualization to make our graph look exactly as we want. Press Select Measurement. Select millimeters as our rainfall is measured in millimeters. Grafana will bring back all data points relating to millimeters. Press the plus to the right of the where. Select Entity ID. Press Select Tag Values. I'll enter Witboy to bring up all entities starting with Witboy. I'll select the Witboy Hourly Rain Rate Pizza. As InfluxDB has only been collecting data for a short period of time, there will not be many data points here, but we'll still graph the data as this will build up over a period of time. Change the alias for the hourly rain rate for the legend and optionally change the name of the query so that it can be referenced easily if you're going to be putting multiple lines onto the same chart. Now let's move over to the visualization of the chart. Change the tooltip mode to all for easy data point value reference. Change the label to millimeters. Change the connected null values to always to connect the lines. Change the fill opacity to 20 to fill underneath the line. Change the gradient mode to opacity to give the graduated opacity. Now that I'm happy with the graph, I can press apply. For our final graph, I was going to display the UV index, but the sun went down. Yes, it even goes down in Australia. So instead, I'm going to create a gauge with threshold colors but this will be against the internal charge capacitor of my Whipboy. This is a battery that charges via its own internal solar panel through the day and discharges through the night, hence only having to use its installed batteries as backup. Press the Add dropdown. Select Visualizations. Now this time, we'll press the Time Series dropdown. This will bring down all the pre-formatted visualizations that are available. Select Gauge. Now we need to run through the same process as before to select our data. Press Select Measurement. As the charge capacitor is basically a battery, select V for volts. Press the plus to the right of where. Select Entity ID. Now let's find our entity. Press Select Tag Value. In my case, type in Whipboy to bring up only the entities that start with Whipboy. Search for your required entity ID. In my case, Whipboy WH90 Capacitor. Enter an alias name, in my case, capacitor voltage. Optionally change the name of the query, Whipboy Charge Capacitor. Now we have selected our data, we can move on to the visualization. As we already know how to set the graph name, the labels, and change the background to transparent, I've already done that. Now I'd like this gauge to be gradually colored from green when the capacitor is at maximum value, at 5.3 volts, and gradually change to red as it reduces to its lowest level of 2.5 volts, at which time the battery backup will kick in to maintain the voltage until it recharges the next day. Scroll down to the standard options. Enter the volts into the units. I've entered 2.5 as my minimum value, and I've entered 5.3 as my maximum value. I've changed the display name to capacitor voltage. Now we could define specific thresholds for our colors, but I want this to be a gradual change of color. As such, in the color scheme, I have selected the red, yellow, green by value. This way, Grafana will select the colors based on the values. Now that I'm happy with my graph, I can apply. Now that I have my three graphs available on my dashboard, I can manipulate the sizes and shapes of these to move them around to where I want them to sit. Once I'm happy with the locations, I can press the Save button. I can give my dashboard a name, a description, and press Save. And that's it. So we've installed InfluxDB, set a retention period, linked it to Home Assistant, and confirmed that it is populated. Then we installed Grafana and linked it through to the Influx database. We created a new dashboard and we used our wet boy weather station to provide data that we represented in graphs. And we did all of this in less time than it would take to drink a coffee from an ember mug. Links in the pop-up. Grafana is an amazing add-on and it's very powerful. It's an application that is best played with to tune to your specific needs. But I hope this tutorial gave you the basics so that you can develop your own amazing graphs.
I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then consider liking, subscribing, and joining the ever-growing community. And if I've opened your eyes to a new world of graphs and charts, then maybe a super thanks or buy me a coffee. It's really appreciated. Until the next one, may all your graphs be green.